Vast of the Visual Arts Student Association is a student group Alberta, managed and run by students in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program. It was the first as a means to raise funds for the Bachelor of Fine Arts graduation exhibition, which you'll learn a little bit about today because that's coming up very soon, uh, but has since evolved to also include other exhibitions and community events like this one. Its current mandate is to advocate for students in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program and to create opportunities through which the research they undertake in their shoes can be brought forward to the community. So without further delay, uh, we're gonna let Vasa take it away. Hi everybody. My name is Mikhaili Shapka and I am the vice president of VASA at the oh, University of Alberta. And I wanted to invite all of you to our grad show that is coming up April 20th to 29th at the Fab Gallery at the university um, where you can see all of uh, the grad show's work and um, we're really excited about it. Anyway, I'll get on with the tour. I'll lead you in this way. So I'm super excited to talk about Maud Lewis. She's one of my favorite artists and I myself consider, I consider myself a folk artist as well. I feel folk art is for the people and by the people. And I just give you a little brief overview of her life. So she is born in 1903 and she was obviously made bright and colorful artwork. Um, with the rural Nova Scotia livelihood because her, her father was a blacksmith and then her husband was a fisherman. So a lot to do with pastoral landscapes and just really brought a joyous energy and positive light into her life. Even though she's had some hardships, she did end up getting arthritis and it did worsen with age. So later on in her life, she was using a bit more stencils and getting some help from her husband, Everett. But besides that, she was still obviously such a wonderful, emitting this joyous light. Um, a lot to do with her work is serial repetition. And that happens a lot with folk art where there's lots of repeated shapes and colors and forms, which she was really able to uh, focus on. Um, every painting, there's 137 paintings in the exhibition and they're all different, even though they look a little bit similar and that's what makes them so much more beautiful. Um, she has lots of animals and flowers, cows and kittens, carts with horses and oxes. So just the daily life, the mundane things that you go about in the real community, just brought into a gallery space so you can really appreciate the beauty in the everyday life. Um, so for her painting, she is really known for her composition and her color. A lot of her work is very symmetrical, which is to the human eye, very, very beautiful and lots of thick oil paint. And when she started, she was making Christmas cards and then she progressed to selling bigger, larger works. And um, her main focus for her was her clientele. So as you see over here, there's a sign paintings for sale because outside of her, she sold paintings outside of her house. And this was the way she made a livelihood, which is admi so admiring for myself and many other artists, especially being a woman. So I definitely appreciate that. And it's something that I look up to. <laughs> And I'm going to pass along to Katie. We're going to do um, look at some of the animal paintings, but feel free to take a look at all of the her early works as we go that way. I'm going to start with this image here, which is the fluffy white cat with yarn, butterfly, and pussy willows. I think what's really interesting about this particular painting is that even just by mentioning the items of yarn, and pussy willows, you can imagine how soft this cat would feel to pet. It's a long hair Persian cat. And I find that a really interesting way to represent texture in a sense without needing to get super realistic. As you can see, a lot of her paintings are, especially from this period in her career, a more graphic style using a lot of different shapes rather than shading to represent fur. I think one of the main things that I find really interesting about these cats is their eyes. As everyone can see, they're super bright. And if you have a cat, you know that sort of 
ambiguous stare that cats might give you. You have no idea what they're thinking. That's what I think of with these images in particular. So you can see she has very similar composition in all of these works. She has a central subject, either one cat or it looks like a parent and two kittens. And then these blossoms coming up over top with the tulips. The tulips are created with very simple, just three strokes each. They're very bold and these sort of lace-like flowers on top give them a real sense of delicacy. And at the same time, as I mentioned, it is still quite graphic and focused on shapes. This was later in her career. So she did have less mobility and less ability to paint those detailed landscapes like you might see over here. But as you can see, even from these really simple compositions, you're still getting a very strong sense of what she's trying to represent. And they're very inviting images, especially with that central, simplistic and stable composition. So I'll just walk over here really quickly. One of the things Maud Lewis is known for is painting these evergreen trees with blossoms. It just shows the creativity that she has to represent these domestic scenes in new ways, um, different than other people might represent them. And I think in these images, you can see a bit more of that detail representing those small flowers and the background scenes, which are different from these images. But as I mentioned, I find these images in particular of the cats just quite homey and make you think about who she is as an artist. There also a lot of repetition reminds us that she is working for a living. This isn't necessarily an artist with a singular masterpiece, but there's a lot of her work that is so inspiring and reflects her history, who she is, and the things that she loves in her hometown. I'm just gonna quickly talk over here for a bit. So we'll walk this way. So here we have a lot of images of oxen, which Maud Lewis is very well known for her oxen. Um, a version of this style of picture was actually used on a post stamp, a Canadian post stamp in 2020. They're very iconic images and similar with the cats, we have stable composition, simple lines, simple shapes, but really bright and fascinating colors. She represents oxen in a lot of her work, sometimes in rural um, landscapes actually working because oxen were used to work the land. I think here you can see a different side of the animals. She's representing them in this portraiture style, showing you their eyes and these beautiful eyelashes that she is known for adding on the oxen, just to give them a bit of personality. Um, another thing to note is these harnesses behind the oxen's head. Maud Lewis's father actually made the harnesses. Um, it's a particular style to have them behind the horns. And you can see by representing that ornamentation in detail in her images, she's also reflecting part of her own personal history. Okay, hi everyone. My name is James and I'm a student from the U of A. I study painting and I'll be giving a tour of the seaside section. Okay, so like the way we begin, we can see that throughout the space, she's done multiple compositions of the same landscape. And this landscape is particular to Nova Scotia, which is the Bay of Fundy, which she was known to be um, around quite often. As we all know, her husband was a fisherman. And so she was actually his, <laughs> his chief salesman and she would help him out with his job. But during that time, she would um, gather her surroundings and go home and paint. And all of this was all based on her memory from the day she was there and then going back home and painting. Um, unfortunately, she developed a juvenile arthritis when she was very young, but she still continued with um, painting and drawing from simple materials such as crayons to paintings like this, wall paint throughout her career. And so uh, we can take a look for at this one. We can see the colors are quite strong, but they're quite, um, the shapes are quite, um, I would say obvious and like large. And I, the way I like to see all, all of these paintings is if I squint my eyes a little bit, you can see the color fields quite present. And I think it's a wonderful way to see things like going back and going closely 
feel free to do that when you have the time later. I, um, one unique thing about her paintings that I don't know if anyone notices is that the birds have a direction that they fly towards. So they always to right. So if you can see the next one, if you can move on, they go from left to right, left to right, left to right. And I think it's a unique way of presenting the work, especially in a gallery like this. You can see the passage of the seasons. So I assume this would be warmer season, like spring, which is approaching now. And from spring, something cold, but beautiful and still like winter. And we can go all the way to something more summer or close to fall, I would say. And that one is actually my favorite painting from this section. I like the way it's separated from blue to green and multiple colors that your eye stays on that. And then we go to blue again to the sky. Uh, I'm not from Canada nor Nova Scotia, but I grew up um, close to seeing lots of boats and eating lots of seafood. So the, the artworks that I've seen and the way she's painted really reminds me of where I come from. And I hope you can connect with the paintings despite our multiple backgrounds of this crowd. It's a wonderful crowd, by the way. Um, yeah, you can see wonderful boats, houses, still houses. And take a time to admire the different kinds of colors she uses. It's not always just bright colors. There's also nice muted colors, like almost you can sense that the, the grass is changing in the season. There's not a lot of clouds and you can just sit and like think about what kind of places you've been to that sort of feel this way. It doesn't have to look this way, but yeah. Hmm, we can move along. Sometimes the birds don't actually just fly from left to right. I would say this is a quite a comical scene. And the birds are gonna eat the fish. And I think it's quite a lively depiction of life in Nova Scotia, when especially that she is a salesperson for fish. Like she has to preserve the fish or else she won't have anything to sell and uh, continue painting. Yeah can move along here, more colorful things, but there's not a lot of clouds, but there's some clouds over there. Before we leave this section, there is a small sort of replica of her house and she's known to have a really decorated and painted house and every single inch of that house was covered in her artwork. And though that's not a um, complete reproduction, it was, uh, it was a way for people who visited the exhibition to try to do something similar. So kids, parents, grandparents, or anyone participated in drawing and sort of emulating what she did in her own, own, in her own home. But, I guess we can do that everywhere, <laughs> whether it's legal or not. Okay, so this section is called Home for the Holidays. Um, so Christmas cards is what sort of started off Maud Lewis's career. She was making them with her mother um, by hand, and most of them were watercolor. Um, she was doing that when she was in her uh, young adulthood, so her early 20s. Um, and then they would sell them door to door and um, yeah, take them around and sell them. Um, so this is sort of what like introduced her to um, commercial art and to selling her art and being able to support herself with her art. Um, so she sold different designs here um, and then would also do hand lettering on the, um, on the cards. Um, she also then later sell, sold painted trays and different like painted houseware that she would 
um, sell in her family friend's salon. And then later in her life, she was also selling these Christmas cards to her um, husband's fish customers. So it was through this continuous sale Christmas motifs that she was able to sort of get an idea of what would be popular. Um, so that's why you start to see this sort of repetition of certain designs, because those were the ones that sold better. Um, and you kind of see that throughout the rest of her work as well, as she sort of tailored to her customers needs or and wants. Um, so this section in particular has definitely like an air of nostalgia. Um, Christmas being this time of year where you kind of return to tradition and kind of despite anything else that was going on in the year. So you can definitely see that in her work and this joyful like romanticization of the, um, of the holidays. Um, so the images that she's drawing on are both nostalgic for herself in a personal way. And then they're also romanticizing and nostalgic of this, um, something like this. Um, in a way that was very popular at the time. So Courier and Ives was a uh, printmaking firm that was um, producing these popular um, color lithographs um, that were just a way for people of middle and lower classes to be able to afford and put art in their homes, even if they couldn't afford um, original paintings all the time. So it made art and it made art very accessible. So it was most likely that she would have seen um, some Courier and Ives prints um, since many of her sort of compositions and especially the motifs that she's drawing on are very similar to a lot of those prints at the time. Um, other than sort of the popular visual culture that she was drawing on, she also sort of added in her own joyful motifs, sort of things that were um, reminiscent of the holidays and also just joy and happiness to her. So you'll notice the sort of butterflies and the stars and the moon um, in some of these uh, window panels. So obviously there's not butterflies in winter, but they sort of still symbolized joy and happiness for her. So it was still around the same sort of idea of the holidays. Um, you also kind of see like in some of the smaller work, you'll see little, some of the people in the background are sort of falling on their butts <laughs> while they're skating. So it was still sort of these, about making it joyful and fun. Um, yeah. Rather than, yeah, rather than just drawing on the purely traditional imagery. So she was sort of being quirky in her own ways. Um, so these window panels are sort of the, one of the features of this section. Um, this is part of a set of eight panels um, that were made for, as a commission for an American family who had a, um, a house in her town there. So this was the biggest commission that she ever got. And it was sort of a way, um, a way for her to continue making a living. Um, also painted her own house a lot. So it sort of was a way to bring her art to other people's houses as well. Um, so these panels, as well as the painting for sale sign that we saw at the very beginning, um, and the other window panels are all painted on this black. Um, the wood is primed like that so that the paintings sort of pop more. Um, it sort of brings more liveliness to them. Um, Uh, this was especially because being out in the weather all the time, they kind of needed um, something to make them pop, but also they needed to be restored a lot to be able to be in the show. Um, yeah. One that we'll look at is the TNT snowman on the side here, which is kind of the quirkiest one of this bit. 
Um, so obviously he's very festive. It's a snowman. He has a little candy cane. Um, he's got little Argyle socks on, but he's also holding like a bottle of uh, TNT and then glasses around it. So um, we can kind of like imply or think that this might be like a warning against like over drinking with the festive holidays. Um, yeah, and then the lobster adds like a little uh, nostalgic touch again for her since it was uh, with her being on the East Coast. Yeah, um, that's mostly it for the holiday section. We're gonna move, um, Makaili will take it again into the section in the next room here. Um, so this is the from here to there section. Um, and personally, one of my favorite ones, just because it really captures the motion and movement of a rural community. Um, you can see the horse and wagon. <laughs> um, you can see um, the ox and how, the, how much hard work all these animals are putting in alongside as humans. Um, and again, it's throughout the season. So she's taking a look outside through her window. She's walking down the street. She's helping her husband do her daily job. And the, car, the older cars, the wagons, everything like that is uh, nostalgic to us because we can see that that's not how we get around these days. Um, I have a personal connection to being out at the farm or in a rural community. My family does a bit of that. So that's why I find these so fascinating. It's just bringing that into uh, a different light for people to appreciate and understand. Um, and as we move through, so there's more of like a winter scene over here. Um, we can see the horses are running pretty fast. People are skating, they're going tobogganing, just all those Canadian things that we like to do in the winter, which is so lovely. People are probably caroling and singing. And as we move over this way, we can even see a train going by. So another means of transportation that we don't use as frequently as much. Um, so just, it has a lot of sentiment to her paintings. Um, you can really tell she had a knack for color. Um, highlighting certain areas and composition wise. This one I think is a little bit humorous. I feel like this should be in a scene from a movie, a getaway vehicle perhaps, or somebody late for lunch speeding down the road. <laughs> um, I find the tulips coming into spring get me excited, especially coming into spring now in Edmonton. And as we keep moving, her famous cherry blossoms on the evergreen trees, which is obviously her imagination going kind of wild, but why not? If you're in the artist, you can do what you want with your paintings. And I appreciate that so much, adding a little bit of color. Yeah, everyone, you could come take a look and we're gonna keep moving along. So she incorporates not only um, lands, like not only the land, but also the sea into these ones as well. Um, and this one actually is my, one of my favorites from this section too, because there's little roosters running around and the tulips and the colorful flowers. So it's one of the most colorful ones and just showing the hard work that we all do, but in the, in the eyes of the artists, it is a beauty. And as we move down, you can see that her mark making is particularly fascinating. And that tends to happen a lot with folk art where there's like lots of planes of, and then a repetitive, not only with subject matter, but with the way the marks are applied to the canvas or the substrate that she is painting on. So if you can see here to make up the leaves and the trees or even the flowers, it's just these like dots over and over and over again. So repeated 
everything is repeated with her work and that's where she can really find an appreciation for that and it's just like your everyday life you go about repeating doing the same things it's habitual so you're able to really appreciate and these ones are more of a summer paintings um we can see there's more of a yellow hue to them with the horses and the chickens and hens again and the eyelashes like katie mentioned on the ox are just add that little extra special Maud lewis touch to the work <laughs> um and yeah i think these are just a lovely little work to showcase life in nova scotia um and then these ones down here we can see the horse is like double triple the size of a human which is <laughs> so amazing because in pers for folk art perspective and accuracy for realistic things is up to you to decide what you want to do and it just gives you like how big the horses really are especially when they're doing all this work and again with the pink on the trees another Maud lewis touch um and that's about it for this section and i'm going to hand it over to hannah okay so now we're sort of in the spring and summer section um I think the, obviously the main sort of feature of this section is again, these window panels. Um, they're part of the same commission that were, that the winter ones were part of. Um, so the family commissioned two sets so that they could swap them out seasonally um, so that they could be sort of um, decorating with the seasons. Um, again, there's, they've gone through a lot of restoration um, after being, um, after being weathered down for so many years, especially being outside. So, but you'll see again, these sort of summer motifs of songbirds and tulips and fresh bouquets. Um, it's very joyful and very bright and colorful, especially compared to the winter ones. It's a little bit more colorful with all the flowers. Um, they're definitely some of my favorite pieces in the show, especially on the yellow background, they pop out a lot. Um, yeah. Again, they're painted on the black primed plywood. So doing this also helps with uh, keeping the wood intact so that the oil paint doesn't age the wood or doesn't degrade from the wood. Um, especially over time, sometimes if oil seeps into the wood, it can sort of start to rot. So that's part of the, the other reason that it's primed like that. Um, yeah. The last piece that we're going to look at in our tour is the yellow songbirds and the cherry blossoms or the apple blossoms, sorry, on the side here. So this sort of piece is not very reminiscent of the rest of her work and you'll sort of see that, especially in the plain blue of the background, there's no depth to it and it's no longer like a landscape. Um, this sort of is a little bit more ornamental. Lots of people see this as sort of like a wallpaper design. It's more of a design rather than a painting. Um, the reason that there's not many more like this is because it probably just wasn't one of a very popular design. Um, so she wasn't, because she focused on selling her work, she wasn't worried about recreating designs that weren't gonna sell. So this probably just wasn't a very popular design at her time. Um, it is a little bit funny since now this is actually one of her most popular pieces. It's recreated the most on like t-shirts and books and different merchandise. Um, yet it wasn't at all popular sort of when she was making it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for our tour. I think all these students at an amazing job. So big round of applause for them. Thanks so much.